His total contributions over that span of time has been $790,000. In this statistic, I don't include PACs or entities within the district. I go for if you are an individual and you can vote in the district, then that is what this number is, 10.9%. And the number of individual unique in-district voters is 136. So 136 unique voters gave gave money as an individual. That's it. So out of multiple thousands of people, there are only 136 people donating to Greg McCourtney's campaign, yeah. There's all, which makes up under 12% of the amount of money he's getting for his campaign. Mm -hmm. That's pretty typical. Yeah. That's only about $75,000. 85% of Greg McCourtney, the money that he has in his account has come from outside of his own district. Yeah. Yeah. So who is Greg McCourtney representing? This is the point we're all trying to make here at the moment. Oklahoma State Chamber Associated Catalyst Oklahoma 501c4 sends text messages to thank conservative Greg McCourtney with leadership race to be voted 2-12-24. I actually got this as a text message. Greg McCourtney, conservative the core, Oklahoma fa family values. And then here was the text. This is paid for by a group called Catalyst Oklahoma. And when you actually go and look up about uh, Catalyst Oklahoma, it's a dark money group. There are people who are getting money from outside organizations and not from the people that run their district. So you're, you're, that whole district is being governed by somebody who's not whose interests don't come from the people inside their district, yeah. but from people who are outside the district putting in money like this Catalyst Oklahoma. Number of registered voters for State Senate District 13, which is Greg McCourtney's, is 49,546. The total number of Republicans within that is 26,400. So literally less than a percent of the, Senate, of, Senate of the available voters voting. support this guy. The district voters are voting for them, but based on propaganda that's being paid for primarily by out of out of district factions yeah, of people. So Bottom we can line. look at what some of those are. But the in-district numbers are what are so concerning. Yeah. Just escalate that that number, the 49,000 out of 49,000, you know, 20, 26,000 Republicans out of 26,000 Republicans, only 136 people gave money to this guy out of 26,000 available. I mean, that's literally like half a percent. And that's the, that's the kind of support you have for a guy in a district, let alone to go all the way up the ladder to uh, pro Tim. It's not a man of the people. That's not someone that represents our interests. That's someone that's going to represent those interests that put him there. You would imagine that three quarters of the people of the money for your campaign should be coming from the people that you claim to represent. 9.1% of his funds come from individuals within his district. Okay, so let's just chat about that for a second. So this is the Speaker of the House. I'd like to see, hey, look at McBride while you're just right there. 44 people. I don't I mean, know why I'm laughing. Is that a I joke? Just, That's a I'll, joke. I'll just read some of them off. I'm looking at 11, 8, 16, 34, 16, 3, 13, 10, 20, 15, Adam Pugh, 23, Rhonda Baker. You named off four people with more than 50% in their district. You you would you would assume in a republic like this country, those would be the low numbers on the totem pole, not the highest numbers. And that shows you, you know, the true power of government and where it really lies. It does not lie with the people. It lies it does not with, lie with the, the people. corporate interests 
with these special interests, that's that's what we're looking at. Because obviously these people do not have the support within their districts. And that just shows you that we literally don't have representative government. No. We have government not of and by and for the people, but we have no. of and by for and for PACs and yeah. special interests. What we're going to have to do is have some legislator with a backbone run a bill that says, sorry, but 25% of your campaign donations can come from outside of your district. If you can't raise that money inside, you shouldn't be elected. And you started off the show about the Chamber of Commerce and talking about these tax breaks for certain groups and whatnot. I think that you can look at where this money is coming from and draw conclusions to see why we have so much corporate welfare in yeah. Oklahoma. I think we don't understand what's going on in this state. I think that so many of us believe that we're in the Bible Belt and you hear them say it all the time that we're a red state. And at this point in time, I think I would say that Oklahoma is the most corrupt that I've ever seen it. I mean, between dark money, between influence peddling, like we just talked about, I just think Oklahoma is in deep trouble, deep deep, deep trouble. And if you think we're somehow an island in a, in a nation that's falling apart and we're somehow not, you're, uh, uh, you're very wrong.